Thank you for joining me for a wonderful read aloud. Find a quiet place to listen and get comfortable. Hello, boys and girls. My name's Mrs. Dobos, and I'm here to read you a story. The story I chose for you today is called The Legend of the Poinsettia, and the author and illustrator is Tommy De Paola. And this is a legend, which means it's a traditional story based on some maybe true events, but also some fictional or made up events from the past. This story takes place in Mexico and the poinsettia is a wildflower that grows there. But the name that goes by many names in Mexico, but the name that the author chose to use in the story is the Flor de la Noche Buena, which means the flower of the holy night. I hope you enjoy it. The Legend of the Poinsettia. Lucida lived in a small village high up in the mountains of Mexico with her mama, her papa, and her younger brother and sister, Paco and Lupe. Papa worked in the fields with their burro, Pepito. Every evening, Lucida felt fed Pepito, gave him fresh water, and filled his stall with clean straw. At home, Lucida helped Mama clean their casita, their little house, and pat out the tortillas for their meals. She took care of Paco and Lupe, and each evening they went to the shrine of the Virgin of Guadalupe, near the front gate, to see if the fresh candles were needed. But every, Sunday, but every day was not work. On Sundays, the family went to San Gabriel, in the square where Padre Alvarez said the Mass. And all through the year, there were fiestas and holy days, which always began with a procession that wound through the village and ended in San Gabriel. One day, close to Christmas, La Navidad, Padre Alvarez came to their cas casita. Ah, Senora Martinez, buenos dias, good day. Padre Alvera said, I am here to ask you about the blanket which covers the figure of the baby Jesus in the Christmas procession. We have used the same one for so many years that it is almost worn out. Because your weaving is so fine, I have come to ask if you would make a new one. Me, Padre, Lucida's mother said, I would be honored and Lucida will help me. On Saturday, Lucida and Mama went to the market to buy the wool for the blanket. They chose the far, finest yarn they could find. At home, Lucida helped Mama dye the wool the colors of the rainbow. Those colors will shine throughout the church, Papa said, as he watched Lucida and Mama string the yarn on the loom. As Christmas drew closer, everyone in the village was busy. All the mamas were making gifts to place at the manger of the baby Jesus in the church. The papas worked together putting up the manger scene in San Gabriel. Lucida and the other children went to the church for singing practice for the Christmas Eve procession, when everyone would walk to San Gabriel singing and carrying candles. Once inside, Padre Alvarez would lay the figure of the baby Jesus in the manger, and the villagers would go up and place their gifts around it. Our gift will be the blanket for the baby Jesus, Lucida told her friends. I'm helping Mama weave it. One afternoon, a few days before Christmas Eve, Lucida and the children were singing in the church when Senora Gomez came hurrying in. Lucida, you must come home. Your mama is sick and your papa has taken her down to the town to see the doctor. You must take care of your brother and sister until your papa returns tonight. Lucida was frightened. Mama had never been sick before. When she got home, Paco and Lupe were crying. They were frightened too. Lucida tried to comfort them. She made some food and sat down to wait for Papa. That evening, Papa came in looking tired and worried. He drew Lucida close and said, Lucida, mi niña, your mama is ill. Your aunt, Tia Carmen, will take care of mama until she is well but I must go back and stay with Mama until I can bring her home, but it won't be until after Christmas. Senora Gomez will take care of you and Paco and Lupe while I am gone. She will come for you tomorrow. Uh, 
The next afternoon, Lucida overheard two women talking. Lucida's mama is ill. She won't be able to finish the blanket for the procession. Isn't it a shame? See, the other woman said, we are all so disappointed. Padre Alvarez will have to use the old, worn out one. When Lucida went home to feed Pepito and get clothes for Paco, Lupe, and herself, she looked at the unfinished blanket on the loom. Perhaps I can finish it, she thought. But when she sat down and tried to weave, the yarn got all tangled. The more she tried to untangle it, the worse it got. It was no use. She could never finish it by herself. She took the unfinished blanket to Senora Gomez. Oh, Lucida, it is so tangled. There isn't time for me to fix it, Senora Gomez told her. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. Lucida started to cry. It was her fault the blanket was ruined. Her family wouldn't have a gift to place at the manger of the baby Jesus. Don't worry, Lucida, we will all go to the procession together. Lucida didn't say anything, but in her heart, she felt that she had ruined Christmas. Come Paco, come Lupe, it's time to go to the procession, Senora Gomez called on Christmas Eve. Where is Lucida? She was nowhere to be found. Lucida was hiding. From the shadows, Lucida watched everyone gather for the procession. The candles were lit, the singing began, and the villagers walked to San Gabriel, carrying gifts to place at the manger. Lucida walked along in the darkness and watched the process procession go into the church, followed by Padre Alvarez carrying the baby Jesus. Little girl, are you Lucida? An old woman stood in the shadows nearby. See, si, Lucida answered, wondering who she was. I have a message for you. Your mama is going to be fine and your papa will bring her home soon, so you don't have to worry. Go now into the church and celebrate Christmas with the others. Paco and Lupe are waiting for you. I can't, Lucida told her. I don't have a gift for the baby Jesus. Mama and I were weaving a beautiful blanket, but I couldn't finish it. I tried, but I only tangled it all up. Ah, oh, Lucida, any gift is beautiful because it is given, the old woman told her. Whatever you give, the baby Jesus will love because it comes from you. But what can I give now, Lucida said, looking around. A patch of tall green weeds grew in a tangle nearby. Lucida rushed over and picked an armful. Do you think these will be all right? Lucida turned to ask the woman, but she was gone. Lucida walked into the church. It was blazing with candlelight and the children were singing as she walked quietly down the aisle with a bundle of green weeds in her arms. What is Lucida carrying? A woman whispered. Why is she bringing weeds into the church? Another one murmured. Lucida reached the manger scene. She placed the green weeds around the stable. Then she lowered her head and prayed. hush fell over the church. Voices began to whisper. Look, look at the weeds. Lucida opened her eyes and looked up. Each weed was tipped with a flaming red star. The manger glowed and shimmered as if lit by a hundred candles. When everyone went outside after the mass, all the clumps of tall green weeds throughout the town were shining with red stars. Lucida's simple gift had indeed become beautiful. And every Christmas to this day, the red star shines on top of green branches in Mexico. The people call the plants La Flor de Noche Buena, the flower of the holy night, the poinsettia. I love the message in this story, the legend of the poinsettia, which is about even very simple gifts can have a lot of meaning as long as they are given with love. So the girl Lucida was only able to give some weeds in the story, but it turned out to be um, a beautiful flower, flower, the poinsettia. So my question for you today is, what's a gift that you have given someone that uh, you gave with love?